So our next speaker is um, Professor Mary Hegarty, who's a um, uh, former student, this is your alma mater, former student of UCD, did your, your bachelor's and your master's degree here uh, before taking your, doing your PhD at Carnegie Mellon. Um, distinguished professor at the Faculty of, Depar uh, Faculty of the Department of Psychological and Brain Sciences, University of California, uh, Santa Barbara. And, and Mary's also a visiting professor here in UCD. She's author of, of over 100 papers and chapters on spatial cognition, diagrammatic reasoning, um, and individual differences. She's a fellow of the American Psychological Society, a former Spencer postdoctoral fellow, um, and the former chair of the governing board of the Cognitive Science Society. And her current research is funded by National Science Foundation. And you're going to talk to us today about uh, learning the layout of different environments, common or dissociated abilities. Okay, thank Thanks you very, very much. much. So great, thanks so much for inviting me. It's so great to be back at UC, UCD um, presenting my research. So, um, yeah, so my research is, uh, is really uh, concerned with individual differences in spatial cognition. And, you know, if I sort of tell you, you know, have you think about spatial ability or individual differences in spatial cognition, probably the types of tasks that come to mind are things like this, mental rotation or paper folding and unfolding, etc. In my lab, we call that small-scale spatial ability because it's about sort of manipulating objects and, um, that are smaller than yourself. But there's another type of spatial ability, which is the ability that enables us to navigate in the environment every day, and we call that large-scale spatial ability. So, um, so what the ability that enabled me to get here this morning, even though the taxi driver had left me over at the um, at the residence um, area, residence house. So. Um, and, and that, this is relatively new. This has only been studied really re re relatively recently, more, more like in the 21st century. So, um, so I want to give you an idea of the types of studies that people have done. Uh, and so a couple of these were done actually in Santa Barbara, first by my colleagues, um, Ishikawa and Montello. And what they did was they, um, they brought people and they, they drove them around this sort of area, of, very exclusive area of Santa Barbara where students wouldn't normally go. And uh, 10 weeks in a row, they, they drove them on two different routes in this environment. And then like after about four days, they drove them on, an in, on a route between these two routes. And each day after they, they gave them this experience navigating through the environment, they would bring them to different parts of the environment and ask them to try and point to other locations that have been in the environment, other landmarks, or estimate straight line distances, how far would it be just as the crow flies, or maybe draw a map of the environment. And, and what they found was there were huge individual differences. Some people like, got it the first day. They were like, almost able to write, draw a really good map almost you know, immediately and could point really well. Other people never got it. They were literally at chance even after 10 weeks of doing this at once a week. Around the same time, we did a similar type of study in uh, two buildings on the campus of UCSB, or in a building. We led people on routes through two different floors. And after they went through and learned this route, then we would, uh, we would bring them to each location and ask them to point to other places and, and do these other things. Um, then um, some other researchers, um, led by Victor Skenazi, later did a similar type of study in, on a college campus, um, where they just, again, brought people to a, a campus they weren't familiar with, had them walk two different routes and then a connecting route, and do the same point again, point to different places on campus afterwards and draw, try and reconstruct a map. But all of these studies are really hard to do because you have to actually bring people to the real environment, walk them around. So um, uh, some uh, Steve Weisberg and Nora Newcomb and their colleagues developed like a virtual environment version of this. So they basically created a little virtual environment of the same campus of, with the same structure. And, um, and they created a virtual environment task where you just on a desktop virtual environment on a computer, you navigate these different routes and then uh, the connecting route between them. And, and so the nice thing about this is everybody can use the same task, everybody's learning the same environment and lots of different labs have now used this. So it's kind of the closest to we, we have to like a standardized measure of navigation ability. Um, in other related tasks, other related research, um, some other researchers led by Steve Marchetti uh, did a study where they, um, they again, taught people a route, again, again, this is virtual environment, in um, 
a road through a, a, a sort of a maze type environment and so you sort of that's the right route that you take and it, and, and what they were actually interested in was navigation strategy. They were interested in like, if they teach you a specific route through this environment and then put you somewhere in the environment and ask you to navigate to, the, to another place, do you navigate by the route you learned, which is actually, you know, a roundabout route, or do you, can you find a short, or do you, do you navigate by a shortcut? And, um, and then um, Alex Boone was a student of mine and he did some work on this too. And what we were interested in as well, to, there's huge, again, there's big differences. Some people always use shortcuts, some people always use the route, the route they learn, some people do something in between. But um, what we were interested in as well, you know, it, it, how much is that due to, related to your ability? I mean, if, if, you're, if you're not taking a shortcut, is, because, is it because you haven't actually learned the layout of the environment, so you're not able to take a shortcut? So we created a version of this where we we again said your goal is to try and take the shortest route and then that becomes then an, an, a measure of ability too. So what all these studies have in common is, um, and this is sort of like the dominant way that navigation ability is studied so far, is that you're given sort of, you learn a new environment by taking, by, uh, based on first person experience, based on an experience of, of walking through the environment um, and typically by learning specific routes through that environment. With certain landmarks pointed out to you and then your knowledge your knowledge of the configuration of that environment or you could call it a cognitive map of that environment is then measured by your ability to point accurately to places that you know are not visible from your current location um, to wayfind efficient find your way efficiently between environments or to draw a map or um, or reconstruct a map but um, so that's that's something that's all of these these tasks have in common, but in what ways in which they different, it differ is the actual environment that you're learning. So these again are examples of some of the environments people have used, and these are like more outdoor environments, kind of irregular, um, you know, uh, sort of curved paths, etc. So some people are doing this type of work with this type of environment, but then other people are doing work as you know with these very sort of more indoor, very um, maze type environments where all the, you know, all, the, all very rectangular, very um, right angles, um, because that's how, how buildings are built. Um, and, and then the other thing is that, you know, people are sort of using different measures of what people have learned. Some people are using, a lot of people are using this measure ability to point to where things are. Um, like, so I think the Newman building would be about here. <laughs> um, um, but other people are using straight light distance, map reconstruction, and then wayfinding efficiency, like can you find your way efficiently? So, um, so basically then studies of navigation, they're measuring learning in different types of environments, and they're operationalizing ability to acquire knowledge, configure knowledge of the environment differently, but sort of the assumption is that we're all measuring the same ability. So what we were really interested in is whether that's true. Is that really true? And so the question we asked in this question in this study was: Does learning of different types of environments reflect the same or different navigation abilities? And does do different measures of learning reflect the same or different navigation abilities? So, um, so you might ask, well, why would we expect that? So, why would we expect different environments could reflect different abilities? Well, you know, outdoor environments like learning the layout of a campus versus indoor learning the layout of a, of a building. Are, you know, there's a lot of different differences between those two environments. One is the availability of distal cues, like say the water tower was always a distal cue with UCD. Um, the, you know, how open the environment is, how much, you know, how, how much you can see, like if, if, can you see the same landmark for a lot of time because it's always open or is it a corridor and you only see it briefly. Um, the sort of affordances or constraints of where you can travel, you can go in a, in a you know, you can go walk across a parking lot or a, um, a field or something in, or in a, an open environment, but in a building you're very constrained, you can't walk through walls. And there's actually evidence that um, people's um, abilities, navigation abilities, depend a little somewhat on the type of environment they grew up in. So people who grow up in sort of very city block cities are not as good at navigating as people who grow up in um, sort of country or more sort of organically uh, growing cities. And in fact, people are better at navigating in the type of environment that they grew up in. So, um, so there's, that's reasons why we might expect this. Um, again, in terms of the actual 
measures we're using of, na of navigation, um, of configuring knowledge. Again, you know, the assumption is we're measuring this sort of, you know, cognitive map or the ability to have a, a really a sense of the layout of the environment. But people have pointed out that like to actually navigate efficiently in, a, in an environment, maybe you don't need that sort of metrically accurate cognitive map. You could just know these are the places in the environment and I know this corridor gets me to this building and the corridor gets me over here. Or you can sometimes in, draw a map of an environment just if you have a, a good route in your head because you just draw the route on, on the paper and it becomes a map. So, um, so for all those reasons, we were, um, we were interested in whether the type of environment and the type of, of um, way of measuring it um, would, would measure the same ability. So we had in the study, we had 90 participants. And so we, did, we had them learn two environments. Um, one was the Silton environment, the desktop environment that all the la lots of labs are using now. That, and then the other one was this very maze type environment, very, very rectangular maze. And, um, we, and then for each of those, we tested them three ways. One was, again, to point, was like, how well can you, when you're in one part of the environment, how well can you point to another place? And the measure there is angular error, or how far off you are. So if, you know, the Newman building is here, and I point here, then how far off is that angle? Um, wayfinding, just how, I mean, again, like excess distance, did you walk further than you had to, or further than the shortest distance? and map reconstruction. Map reconstruction, it's a measure called five-dimensional regression where you're looking at the, the, the agreement, the correspondence between the actual environment and what people drew. And so we had, for each of these, for learning environment, the people learned each of these environments and then they were tested these three different ways. So, um, and so basically the main um, analysis we did here is something called confirmatory factor analysis. And it considered sort of three different models of what might be going on here. One is that all of these abilities, like the three measures for each environment, all sort of reflect the same ability, which we might call cognitive mapping ability. Another possibility is that the, there's, there's a two-factor model saying that learning the indoor environment, this, um, this indoor maze-like environment, is somewhat separable, is a separate, somewhat separate ability from the ability to learn the outdoor environment. And then the third one was that it's that there might be a different ability related to sort of the pointing measure, the um, map reconstruction measure, and the wayfinding efficiency measure. So we we're really contrasting these three models. And just real quickly, um, just to show you the variability um, for um, like, so Silton, we actually also separated out pointing within routes and pointing between two routes, but we actually collapsed over that in the analysis. But but you could, I mean, the most important thing is that for this measure, perfect performance would be like, would be zero because there's no error, right? And you can see some people were only about, you know, four degrees off on average, but other people were 64 degrees off on average. So you can see how big the individual differences are. Um, and the same for the maze, they, they actually varied from eight degrees off to 90, 95, 90, 90 degrees is actually, um, is actually uh, chance performance here. And um, similarly for the, um, the map reconstruction, there was a lot of variability. And for um, the, um, the wayfinding, wayfinding in this more open campus environment was actually very good, but there was still some variance. And real quickly, this is what the correlations look like as um, basically anything that has a color here, which is ever, everything was significant and some correlations were higher than others. But um, the, the big thing was how did these models um, stack up. So the first model that said there's just one ability relating all these was not a good fit. So these are just different measures of the fit of the model, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't a good fit to the data. Um, the second uh, the one the one that said um, that sort of wayfinding, pointing, and map reconstruction are all kind of reflect different abilities. That was also not a good fit. But the one that the the model that fit well was the one that said there's somewhat some separability between the ability to learn this sort of outdoor open environment and the sort of indoor maze type environment. But the other thing to notice is that the two, um, these two um, factors, which um, were also pretty high, very highly correlated, 0.71, suggesting that really there is a lot of common variability that's being picked up by all of these things. So basically, um, you know, there's no evidence for different abilities associated with different outcome measures. Um, 
there was somewhat separable factors for large open environments and smaller built environments, but um, they, you know, they still had a lot of common variants. We have to do further research to know now what's really different there. Is it the type of environment or is it the specific environment that they were learning? But in general, this is good news for researchers because it is suggesting that even though we're all using different environments and somewhat different measures, we are measuring the same ability. So just some um, future directions would be to, you know, actually look beyond this to even more different environments like hiking in a, in a forest or something, how well would people do there? Um, and also, you know, more generally thinking about, I mean, like learning the layout of new environments is one type of, of navigation tasks that we do, but there's lots of other things like our ability to maybe just, you know, keep track of where we are as we're moving through space or navigate based on maps or verbal instructions. And these are other types of tasks that we should also be looking at to measure um, spatial ability. So in another study I'm doing right now um, with some colleagues at UCI, um, we're, we're actually measuring like 40 different tasks. So we have a huge, we're going to have a big data set. So I just want to thank my grad students who did most of the work here and my funding. And thank you very much. Thank you.